Hello everybody, I'm Larry and I hope you're having a great day. Welcome to my channel, Larry Under Pressure, where we fix recipes which are delicious, easy, tested, quick, and budget friendly. If you're a returning subscriber to this channel, thank you so much for your support. If you're new to this channel and enjoy this type of cooking video, I encourage you to like and subscribe below. Subscribing costs you nothing and you'll be notified each time I post a new video. On this channel we cook with various methods including the Ninja Foodie, the Instant Pot, the Kasori Air Fryer. However, many of our recipes are flexible and can be cooked in several different ways. Some can even be done in a conventional oven or on the stovetop. But my definite preference is the Ninja Foodie due to the impressive flexibility and dependability. I'll be providing more cooking details in each unique demonstration. Today we're preparing Hawaiian Salmon Fillets in the Air Fryer. This dish can be cooked just as easily in the foodie or in a conventional oven and is especially flavorful. So let's get started. Alright, let's begin. The first thing we're going to add is one quarter cup of barbecue sauce and it really doesn't matter what kind you use. Um, it all tastes good. This happens to be some that I bought at Aldi. Imagine that. And we'll put that in there first. The second thing we're going to put in is a half cup of pineapple juice. And you need pineapple rings for this recipe, so I just used the juice right out of the can. Half cup of pineapple juice is our next ingredient that we put in there. And the next thing we're going to put in is about a quarter of a cup of soy sauce. I use the low sodium soy sauce, but if you like the salt, you can fix it any way you like. Make it your recipe. The next we're going to put about a quarter of a cup of packed brown sugar. That'll add a nice flavor to it. And the next thing we're going to do is add a teaspoon of sesame oil. That adds a good Hawaiian type flavor to it. And then about a third of a teaspoon of ground ginger. Keep stirring that as we go. About a fourth of a teaspoon of garlic powder. And this is garlic powder, not garlic salt. Garlic salt won't work well because you've already got the salt of several of the other ingredients in there. And then the last thing is totally optional. I like it with a little kick to it. So I add about a half a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. Stir that. Get it nice and stirred up. Until it's all mixed up. And then we'll move to the next step. In this step we're going to take the sauce that we made in the previous step. Make sure it's well mixed. Pour that into a saucepan. And I'm actually using a new wave induction cooktop, portable induction cooktop. I'm going to put it on medium high. And we're going to heat that and pull it until it begins to slowly boil. And once it begins to slowly boil, we're going to let it boil for three to four minutes. And then we're going to turn it down and allow it to simmer for about 15 minutes and it'll get much thicker. It'll begin to thicken as it cools. So let's get it up to uh, a slow boil and we'll come back and take a look. It's slowly boiling. Now I have it on a medium low boil and it needs to boil for about three to four minutes. I actually like to leave it on for about five. And after it's boiled for a few minutes, when we sit it aside, as it cools down, it'll begin to thicken. And that's exactly what we want it to do. So we're going to let it cook for another couple minutes. And then we're going to take it off. And once it cools just a little bit and begins to thicken, we'll come back and move to our next step. So hang in there. We boiled that basting mix for about five minutes. And then we've let it sit to cool off. 
and as you can see as we draw the spoon through it it leaves kind of a wake and that's exactly how you can tell it's done enough it's perfectly thick the brown sugar has caramelized and mixed with the soy sauce and the other ingredients to make a really great thickness now let's get our air fryer ready first thing we're going to do I like using paper in my air fryer because it makes cleanup a whole lot easier. So let's put the paper in and I'm going to spray it with avocado oil to make it easier to release. Then I'm going to put the two pieces of fresh salmon steak in there. Just like that. Then I'm going to get around here where I can get to them and use the sauce and brush that on. You can certainly let these uh, marinate in the sauce for a while. Uh, you could put them in a plastic bag and let them marinate for an hour or two. I wouldn't leave them overnight. But you could let them marinate and it would add to the flavor. These have skin on the back so there's not any point in, in putting any of this on the back of them because the skin will come off anyway and the sauce won't get through the skin while we cook it. Okay, we've got those nice and sauced up. They look great. We're going to put them in the air fryer next. in the fryer. We're going to turn it to 400. <whistles> 400 degrees for 20 minutes. And start. Now at the end of five minutes, we're going to go back in and rebrush them with more sauce. We're going to do that every five minutes. For the last five minutes, we're going to add a piece of pineapple on top of them and let them cook with the pineapple on there. So we'll be back. Stay close. The air fryer just turned to 15 minutes, so it's been in there for five minutes. They're already looking good. We're going to take them out and brush them with more of the soy sauce that we made in the first step because we want plenty on there all the time as it heats and cooks it'll begin to caramelize on there and sort of char onto it and oh it makes the best flavor especially with the red pepper flakes if you like pepper flakes we're going to put it back in the air fryer look at that we're going to put it back in the air fryer and let it cook another five until we come up to 10 minutes and then we'll check on it at that time. We just turned to 10 minutes so let's check one more time and add one more layer of sauce onto them. Oh look at those. They smell amazing. But then I always say that because I love the smell of food. I like the taste of food. You can tell by looking at me. Okay, we've got another layer on them. They're turning brown on the edges and look real good. So we're going to let it go for five more minutes. In five more minutes, we're going to add the pineapple rings to the top of it and another layer of sauce and cook it for the final five. So stand by and we'll be right back. There we go. The air fryer just cut over to five minutes. We're going to take those out. First thing we're going to do for the last cooking phase is brush them with sauce. They sure do smell good. And then we're going to put pineapple rings on each of them. 
going to put two on each. You can do it however you want. Also, I, I don't I think I told you, I've done this with um, skinless, boneless chicken thighs, and it's absolutely wonderful. I've done it with pork chops, and they do okay if you take something like a meat tenderizer and rough up the surface of them so they absorb more of the sauce. The muscle is so hard on pork chops that they don't do real well unless you rough them up. You could take a fork and a stab in them multiple times on each side and then sauce them and I think they'd be just fine. But chicken thighs, skinless boneless chicken thighs and these salmon fillets are just the best. You can probably think of some other things you could do with them. If so, put it in the comments and we'll give it a try and see how it goes. Okay, we've got the sauce and the pineapple. We're ready for the last five minutes. And then we'll come back and take a look at the finished product. There we go, it's all done. So let's get them out of there and put them on a plate so you can see how they look. And then I'll cut out for a minute and plate them up and show you what they look like when I get all done with that. They really, really look good. It makes them so easy to get out being on the parchment paper. Well, that one broke in half, but that's okay. It won't taste any different. Look how perfectly cooked that is. Maybe if we get this one from end to end, it won't be as likely to break. There we go. The pineapple smells good, everything looks good. You can see what they look like. They look amazing. So I'll be back in just a minute. I'm going to go ahead and plate them up to give you some serving suggestions and we'll give them a taste test. We're ready to plate one of these now. Here are some serving instructions. I really like them with mashed potatoes. There are some mashed potatoes. These are just buttered mashed potatoes. You can jazz them up any way you want to. We're going to add the salmon on top of that with that wonderful pineapple on top of it. Then we're going to put a little bit of rosemary on there. Jazz it up and make it smell even better. And a little bit of coleslaw. I think coleslaw is really good with this. Especially this time of year. So, that's a serving suggestion. And next we'll move to the other side of the kitchen and give it a taste test. Let's give it a taste and see where we are with it. But I can tell by looking at it that it's going to be really good. It's cooked perfectly, nice and pink in the middle, and has that sear on the outside. Mm. Couldn't be any better. A little cold fall. Oh my goodness, it's really good. You should fix this. It took how long for us to fix it? Maybe 45 minutes from start to finish. 
and I was doing a lot of things to make it, to enhance it for the video. So you could cook it even quicker if you wanted to. Thank you very much for joining us today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and will successfully fix this dish yourself at home. A full version of this recipe is available below. It's printable if you'd like a hard copy. While you're down there, please consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. You can also share the video with others you think might find it useful. Thanks again for your support. Until next time, I wish you happy cooking.